somebody with special characteristics, maybe somebody who came in tardy and wanting you to not mark them tardy. Oh, let's see, Caitlin. <laughs> Has her phone out too. It's a double jeopardy here. Oh, this is going to be easy though. All I need you to do is go up the steps and stand on the board and face your classmates. <laughs> and now walk the plank out there over the shark infested waters. Okay, Nina, is she out over the shark infested waters? She is. But she doesn't have to worry because I'm holding this board down, right? <laughs> if I wasn't holding, holding the board down, then this thing would rotate and she would, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm not holding it down. And she went really far out there. What is preventing her from falling into the shark infested waters? She has a force and a lever arm that should rotate the board and send her down into the shark infested waters. Why isn't that happening? She has to stay out there until somebody answers that. Ryan. There's a much larger lever arm on the other side. So the From what? From the lever arm, what's the force? That's gravity of the other board, of the other side of the board. So it's the weight of the board, right? So there's a torque from the weight of the board, and that is larger than her torque, or otherwise she would go down into the drink. Okay, and come back. Careful. Very good. So, if I were to go out on this, could I go as far as she did? And she went pretty far. If I walked out here, what would happen? I would do that, right? But there's got to be some distance I could go out. So, do you think we could calculate how far out I could go before it started to come up? Should be able to. So let's do that. He wanted to give you a few pointers if you want to do the uh, walk the plank demonstration. So you saw how he started it off with a student volunteer, and then I posed the question how far out I could walk and balance it. And so there's a accompanying slide to this video that shows you how to go about that. Uh, just want to give you some pointers if you want to implement it. So notice I have a large board here and it's eight feet long and it is a 10 by four, which really means it's nine by three, right? 66 pounds, uh, this works great. You can get away with a smaller one. I used a smaller one uh, for many years, but uh, eight foot long is good. Some people prefer a wider board and thinner. Uh, 66 pounds is a lot, and I know for some of you that'd be pretty tough hauling it around, uh, but you can always get help once you get it here. It just stays here all day, and so I highly recommend not letting that uh, prevent you from doing this. And so we go through and solve for how far out I can uh, go, and it comes out to, uh, uh, I think on the slide it says 9.4 inches, which would be about to here. Um, today it was 9.2 for some reason. I think the board is losing mass. Termites, sap leaking, something. Uh, but it's really this pencil mark. So how do you go about testing it without hurting yourself? Well, definitely use a step stool. And I have a student volunteer hold the board down. And so when I'm getting on and getting situated, they're holding it down and then I have them carefully lift up when I've gotten out. But you can also hedge it with uh, something a little bit more. So I have nobody on there now. I'm not gonna go all the way out there. But you can bring this up with them. The key thing is what can go 9.2 inches out there? It's my center of mass. And if I lean out, well, that's bad. My center of mass is on the edge of my left foot. If I lean in, then that's sort of cheating. And so, because my center of mass is more on this side. And so I lean in as I go out, and I'm able to put my fingers on the ceiling that doesn't hold me, but it sort of steadies me. And so I'm not going out any further than this, but in class, I would get out to that line and then stand straight and then have the students slowly lift up their hands. And usually the board is just teetering on going, but if it starts to go, all you do is lean in. And so it's not really a problem. 
uh, practice it maybe, but your students will get a kick out of it. And then I follow that up with the classic balancing problem of finding the center of ma the uh, mass of a meter stick. And so this comes from the conceptual physics lab manual. I do kind of a low budget version. Uh, so I just have a loop of string and you hang it at about 85 centimeters. You put a known mass, in this case a half kilogram, on one side and until it balances. And then the question is, what's the mass of the meter stick? It's pretty much the same problem as the walk the plank, except now the unknown is the mass of the meter stick instead of the weight of the board. And I find the students do way better at this, even though it's a different problem, a different context, they're able to generalize the example and uh, figure this out uh, a lot more uh, than before I was doing this demo. So I urge you to try it. You don't have to have the eye patch and the pirate sword, but it helps. You could uh, go all pirate if you want, uh, but I just stick with the eye patch and the uh, sword. So give this one a try, and I think you'll find your students uh, learn from it and also enjoy it. Okay, just here's a slide giving you some of the advice for the walk the plank activity. And so I'm showing you what I use, uh, 10 by four, which is actually nine by three. And I have it stick out one and a half feet over the table, but for whatever board you get, get a long board, get one with a decent amount of weights, and you can figure out what works for you. Uh, I talk to a student ahead of time or as you'll see in the video, pick out somebody that walked in tardy, but they're always somebody, somebody that's not very heavy, so there's no risk of them going out too far. Uh, you can calculate that and, and put a little bit of, of thought into it to make sure that happens. Uh, and then I'm holding down the board as they walk out, but then let go, and people are sort of surprised uh, when they're okay. And so uh, prompt them for what's going on, and then see if you can figure out how far you could go, or I guess you could get a student volunteer that's heavier and solve for how far they can go. Uh, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, but whoever you use, have a student hold down the other end of the board until you're out over where you calculated, and then have them carefully lift up as I was talking about it. And if you can touch your ceiling, uh, it can help steady you, but you don't have to. And kind of here's the math. Um, how, what is the level, the unknown lever arm? And so I have a free body diagram, some of the torques about the fulcrum. Now the fulcrum is really the whole table, but when it's just about to go, this would be the edge of the table. And so you're measuring how far out from the edge of the table you could go. Then the normal force would be concentrated right at that spot. So we know it's a second condition of static equilibrium. Some of the torques equals zero. And the tricky thing is figuring out that this is two and a half feet. And that's sort of the thing they have to watch when they're doing these gravitational torque problems. And so I found it's 9.4, and sadly this year it was only 9.2. And then I mentioned the uh, meter stick problem. I'll just put that slide up real quick um, for uh, your benefits. Let's go through it here. And so this is what a student would do in an activity that's basically the same thing, except they're solving for the unknown mass instead of how far out you could walk. So the half kilogram mass is like you walking out on the plank, and then they're figuring out the mass of the plank.